closed. Board members at this time have questions. Is the applicant here, Mr. Fincher? Board members at this time have any questions of Mr. Fincham or of the applicant? And Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Marshall, you don't have to stay if you don't want to. <laughs> questions? Mr. Underwood? No, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make the motion that we um, give special exception 04, we accept special exception 04 2010. Second. One second. Um, I believe Mr. Emerson would like, as the, as the county attorney, would like to offer a clarification to the conditions or a slight change. Yeah, just in maybe in item three where it says no long term parentheses greater than 30 consecutive days rental of rooms shall be permitted. If if I read what I think you is intended there, maybe to change that to say no long term greater than 30 consecutive days rental of rooms to any guest or guests shall be permitted or to the same guest or guest to the same guest or guests it sounds like the intent is to not allow someone to stay there for more than 30 can't days stay, right you can't stay more than one person but they can't could stay keep the rooms more. rented to different guests for you know 365 days a year okay so it's intended to prevent would like to see I mean, the clarification between the two different situations. Do we need to amend the motion? Well, we, you, we're, we're just going to hold your motion for a second because I think, is that Mrs. Edgerly? Yes. Did I say that right? Well, um, actually, it's Edgerly hyphen Olberg. Edgerly hyphen Olberg. Olberg. Right. Oh, uh, okay. That's left not half on. my name out, but you pronounced the first half right. Yes. Oh, thank you because that's not on our paper, so we didn't have the hyphen, hyphen part. Are, do you understand what the county attorney said? I do, and um, in the previous meetings, they chose to put that in there. I'm not really sure why, because it's a bed and breakfast. It's not a boarding house. Right. Um, so uh, I personally don't know anyone that goes to a bed and breakfast for a month at a time, but <laughs> I guess just to be safe, you know, they put it in there. So. Okay, and that's, that's kind of it, just to be safe? Uh, I don't even know why they brought it up, but it seemed to be a concern for the other board. So. But you don't have any problem with that at all, do you? I don't intend to have anyone staying for a month at a time. Okay, no. so you don't have any problem if we say nobody can stay there more than 30 days? Um, I guess not. I mean, they, okay. the last um, committee said that we could rent a room out of our house with even, without even opening a business. Right. That would be longer than a month at a time. Yet for the business, being a bed and breakfast, they chose to put it in there that someone couldn't stay for longer than a month at a time. So it was a little contradictory to me, but it doesn't matter because that's not our point. We're getting ready to approve it as long as you don't mind that 30-day problem. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter? No, okay. Not to me. So. Thank you. Okay. Okay, Mr. <laughs> Underwood, you made, a, you made a motion and you would like to amend your motion to reflect the comments of the county attorney. Yes, sir. Ms. Popwitz, you made the second, and your second also reflects the amendments made by the county attorney. I'll amend my second. Any other discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. That motion carries unanimously. Mr. Fincham, uh, we have agenda item number six, which is amendments to chapter two, eight, and appendix B of the 2030 comprehensive plan to designate an urban development area and supporting policies. Mr. Fincham. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, we actually uh, had the first reading on this proposal uh, at your previous meeting. Uh, as you will recall, the General Assembly amended the state code to require certain localities, of which Carolina is one, uh, to actually amend their comprehensive plan and designate urban development areas. Uh, and as part of that designation, ultimately there are specific standards that will have to be incorporated into our subdivision and zoning ordinances in the future. This is actually somewhat of a departure from previous actions at the General Assembly where they have considered the comprehensive plan a guide. Uh, and in this particular case, they chose to require specific language of localities in their plan. The proposed amendment would implement those 
uh, legislative requirements of the General Assembly and designate a portion of the Carmel Church Community Planning Area, specifically uh, a portion of the Carmel Church Station project, which was previously zoned by the board as the county's urban, single urban development area. None of the other designated growth areas in the county actually meet the criteria of the General Assembly in terms of density, uh, residential densities, and, and certain issues like that. This was really the only area that qualified without further amendments to the plan and designating higher densities in one or more of the other growth areas. Um, and, and the Carmel Church Station project, when approved, was actually evaluated for consistency with the UDA legislation. The uh, amendments to the plan themselves are highlighted, were highlighted in, in your packet for uh, your review and as uh, stated, would apply only to the uh, Carmel Church area uh, as designated in the comprehensive plan. The Planning Commission did recommend or approval of this comprehensive plan amendment to the Board of Supervisors. Thank you, Mr. Fincham, and you said it three times, but one more won't hurt. This urban development area will only pertain to Carmel Church Station and no other area of the county. Yes, sir, that is correct. Okay. Board members at this time have any questions of Mr. Fincham? Okay, we will declare the public hearing uh, for the amendments to the comprehensive plan to designate urban development area to be opened. Is there anyone who would like to speak regarding this matter? Is there anyone who would like to speak regarding this? Hearing none, the public hearing is declared closed. How does the board wish to, to dispose of this item? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion uh, that we accept the amendments to chapters 2.8 and appendix B of the two, uh, 2030 comprehensive plan to designate the urban development area and supporting policies. Second. Motion made by Mr. Popowitz, seconded by Mr. Underwood, that we proceed and create the designated urban development area, which as stated previously will only affect uh, the proposed development at Carmel Church Station. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed nay, that motion carries unanimously. Uh, Mr. Fincham, while you're there, while you're there, we only have two things to do. We have the first reading for the technology zone and Dr. Kilo, I think I see in the back. Okay, so you're there. Wanna do the Reader's Digest version? That would be Mr. Wilson. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Wilson. You can sit down, Mr. Fincham. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Wilson, that's right. You're doing the technology zone ordinance. And again, that whole book is not for the ordinance, is it? You're doing the Reader's Digest version, right? Uh, I can absolutely do the oh, Reader's I would love that. Thank you. Digest version, sir. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, this is your first reading for the technology zone ordinance amendment. Uh, actually, um, the very brief uh, version of this reading to extend the technology zone designation to the entire county uh, is summed up uh, in the uh, summary paragraph of the uh, ordinance change which says all of Caroline County Virginia is hereby designated as a technology zone and made subject to the provisions of this chapter. Um, simply put sir that uh, uh, what this does is it extends further the benefits of the technology zone that we currently have that applies to all primary and secondary growth districts now. Uh, it will extend to places that may be marketable as a technology area even though it is not in a primary growth district. Uh, a specific example would be Remuda Ranch. They have over 30,000 square feet of uh, campus-like buildings uh, and 500 acres. It's something that needs to be marketed. Um, and we have, of course, other mega sites and so forth, too, that are outside the, these uh, the current growth districts. What this will allow us to do 
is apply those kind of incentives to uh, companies that would look at those properties or have expressed interest in those properties in the past. Um, uh, we have had this technology zone um, in operation for applying for two years now, uh, and most people live in technology zones as we speak. It is caught, we have no complaints. Uh, it is not does not uh, further anyone's actual zoning of their property. It doesn't uh, cause any kind of reorganization of their tax situation. It, it is uh, neutral in those regards. It simply allows us to bring another tool to the business recruitment process. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Wilson. Any questions of the board at this time for Mr. Wilson? Uh, just a comment, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Bob? I, I think that this is something that, um, like I said, we, we I know Mr. Wilson's worked very hard on our program and economic development. This allows him to, to further that effort. I think that um, uh, what he's applied here is uh, indeed a creative way to, to expand our outreach to other areas of Virginia and also the United States. So uh, I would suggest we go forward with the uh, 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 public hearing on the amendment. Uh, but I'll allow comment before I make a motion. Okay. That was, that was really it. Um, when this is our first reading, if the board decides tonight to move it to pub public hearing, then that's what our motion would be. Yes. Uh, any other comment? I, I guess I have a couple. My concern is what does this do in terms of zoning? Because when you say technology zone to the entire county, it looks like the comp plan sort of doesn't have any real play. And I guess that's my concern. When you say that to somebody, that implies that they can go just about anywhere in the county and say, this is where I want to do something. And I'm not sure the comp plan really is going to allow us to do that, at least the way we have it now. We have designated areas, and I do agree with primary and secondary growth areas, but I'm a little reluctant to say countywide because I think it implies something that we may not actually mean. Well, uh, actually, what I, I, I respond to that, sir, is that most of the people we're talking to um, are, are pretty aware that this is an overlay concept that allows for us to talk to them in a more creative way about business recruitment. They're, they're not at least a bit con, uh, confused that this somehow changes the zoning of that property. Um, that, so the, I think the people we are dealing with are more sophisticated so that, that, that confusion doesn't seem to exist for them. Well, I'm concerned about those that are less sophisticated to think that that means the zoning's been changed, which can happen. I appreciate that that uh, that concern. Obviously, not everyone is is going to be on a, a certain page with that. Um, the only, what I would say is that uh, most people are go to sleep at night in a technology zone, and it, and it had, doesn't really affect their lives. And they and they wake up in the morning in a technology zone too because their house happens to be there. It doesn't change, you know, their zoning of their home or their farm or whatever. Um, I, I think that uh, we just have not had that kind of a problem so far. Mr. And Wilson, where do technology zones exist right now They're in the in, county? Uh, all primary and secondary growth district, districts in the county. Uh, so Lady Smith, uh, Bowling Green, uh, uh, Carmel Church, that sort of thing. So your, your statement that a lot of people go to, go to bed living in a technology zone and don't really know it, we basically a while back zoned not zoned, but de designated. Yes, sir. That's the word, that's the right word, not zoned. We designated all of our primary growth areas as, quote, technology zones. Yes, sir. Which really just helps you in business recruitment. Yes, sir. It's really not a planning and zoning type of thing, which, thank you, now I understand why you're here and Mr. Fincham is there, because it's really a business recruitment tool. Absolutely. It has nothing to do with land use, that kind of zoning, and if someone in a technology zone wanted to create the next, um, I got to pick the right company, the next Apple computers or whatever out of their garage, they would be in a technology zone anyhow, but still would have to go through other planning and zoning things to start making computers in their computer. That's absolutely correct, sir. Okay. Does that help, Mr. Seeley, or does it make it work? I just to the average person, when you say the entire county is a technology zone, you say the word zone in, in that 
phrase. And I think when you say zone, it has to some people an implication. But I, I think perhaps uh, the legislature picked an unfortunate word, uh, overlay district I'm or something. Not, would I'm have been. Just, just giving <clears throat> you the, the, the tone of what you may hear. We would, we would probably par or, or phrase that a lot better and say it's an economic development technology zone. Then it doesn't have any you know, B1, RP connotation to it. That's really what it is. It's going to be up to us and Mr. Wilson, of course, to make sure we get that message out there so nobody's really afraid. Yes, sir. Or Unfortunately, uh, in the last two years, no one's been confused or come forward and, and express concern. So perhaps we're just fortunate in that. But uh, so far, it's, it's, it's been all right. Those, that was my, my question. OK. Uh, motion to move it. I'm sorry. I do have a question. And Mr. Benjamin, if you could. Oh, see, you thought you were out. I'm not, I'm not so much uh, sure that we aren't sending a message, and I want to make sure that we aren't creating an issue, an issue for people that may think, as Mr. Celia said, they are in a technology zoned area, but when it comes to zoning the property, if it has to be rezoned to allow a technology company to come in and to operate, uh, if we say the whole county is, is a technology zone, uh, I'm not sure that we're being honest about it. Because the whole county is not zoned business or yeah. in a business zone, and the whole county is not in an industrial uh, zone. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir, I, I understand your concern. Um, going back to the concept of using this as a recruitment tool, um, I think it, it gives Mr. Wilson and the economic development program you know, one more banner to, to state, you know, we're, we're interested in technology. Uh, we've designated the area as a technology zone. I think your concern is, in doing so, are we sending the message that we're automatically going to zone every piece of property if somebody latches on, I want this specific 50 acres of land your concern is, are we sending a message that we are willing to do that? And that, that's, that's exactly right. I, because I, we, our comp plan certainly says uh, primary, primary growth areas. And we know where we want the businesses to go. And we have spent a lot of money in putting water and sewer uh, in the ground in order to sort of drive the development in certain areas. Where if we go with a technology zone, if you will, Yes, sir. Uh, I'm just concerned that we are, we're not being forthright uh, with the people and uh, up front with them because they may think, hey, I'm going to go buy that 15 acres of land and then get it rezoned. I won't have any problem getting it rezoned. When in fact, they may have a, a big issue in getting it rezoned. Uh, yes, sir. I, I understand there's the potential there that there could be some misperception yeah. between the, the technology zone and the actual land development regulations and policies of the board. I guess I would also suggest to you that in part you may have that now. Um, in designating, for example, all of Carmel Church as a technology zone, you have included Belmont in that designation. Um, so if a similar issue occurred and somebody wanted to come in and develop this technology indust uh, industry in the middle of the community of Belmont, I'm not sure that you would be interested in doing that either. Um, so I'm not sure that I understand your concerns and, and I guess I share some of those concerns about perception, but in reality, I think we may already have a similar situation with the designation of all of your growth areas. You know, certainly, I don't want to take any tools away from uh, Mr. Wilson. That is certainly not my, my uh, reason for, for question. I just, I just think we have to be careful as to what we are putting out there to the general public. Because once, once we have one or two businesses that think they can go into a technology zone area, 
regardless of where it's at in the county, and then they cannot because of zoning issues, then I think you're going to create a, uh, a negative perception of Caroline County as to they, they say they are willing to do this, but when uh, the facts start to hit the, to the ground, they're not willing to, to rezone the property for you. So uh, I think we could, we could end up hurting ourselves. Uh, if, I, if I may, sir. Um, the, the practical application of this, of this redesignation as, as the whole county, um, the companies we speak to uh, in every level of sophistication um, are looking for great convenience. Most will want to be where it's already zoned. In fact, all our, virtually all our, our recruitments in the last 10 years have been where the land has been properly zoned as, as planning uh, has designated those areas. People do not like to get outside of that. What this allows us to do is for that rare company that's looking for a large piece of land um, is to be able to bring these incentives to that company. Smaller companies will not be interested in going where there's not water or sewer, but companies that are very large may want a very big campus area and will be able to take care of their own water and sewer uh, and make those kind of investments. Those are the companies we're really looking for. I don't see a lot of overlap and, and, and confusion because of this. And I, it's one other thing, there is a, an analogous situation right now with a federal program, which is the new market tax credit areas. Caroline County, everywhere outside of its primary growth areas, is a new market tax credit area where the federal government will offer tax advantages to companies to actually set up shop where we don't have proper zoning. So uh, there is already the federal inducement to do that, and in 10 years we have not had uh, a critical issue because of that. So uh, uh, if this is analogous, and I think it is, I don't anticipate that kind of negativity. I'm going to report to a public, to a public hearing for 10 minutes and see what the comments are. If I may also. That motion will be in order now. Oh. I'll make a motion to move forward with public hearing for technology zone. I'll second that motion. <coughs> motion made by Mr. Popwood, second by Mr. Underwood to move the technology zone ordinance to public hearing um, June 14th or? 14th June? Okay, we're looking at June 14th. That's fine. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. I'm sure there'll be more discussion on the technology zone. Dr. Kilo, do you need a minute or so to come forward? Or you look like you're ready with everything in hand, so you don't need any time to get prepared. <laughs> I hope not. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Now, our agenda item says basically a discussion of the fiscal year 2010 slash 11 and fiscal year 2011 and 2012 school budgets. Um, there have been, just to give you a little background or to give the rest of us some background, um, you met with Mr. Akers and- um, Mr. Parton. Mr. Wright, Mr. Wright. Mr. Parton, as part of our liaison for the, um, the educational group and there were some comments from there and at our previous work, work session the board of supervisors agreed to allow you to use whatever leftover funding you had in your budget this year for raises for teachers and the cafeteria workers and the bus drivers and, and all Bonus. bonuses thank you one time and that that is a very good point the bonus is a one-time event and a raise we have to budget for year after year after year. So um, it was a one-time bonus that the board had said. And I, I think we wanted to kind of come together and make sure that's what we all kind of figured we were doing. And that's kind of why you're here, unless there's something else that you would like to talk to us about. I uh, really appreciated the meeting and, and uh, gained a lot of insight in what I have done. If you don't mind, I created a package to talk about where we started, where we are today, um, and what we're doing with the end of the year monies that include 
bonuses and just to show you where we are at because we've done a lot of since the meeting with Mr. Akers and Mr. Parton, and Mr. Wright and I talked and I've met with the school board and we've tried to see what we could trim and work and wanted to try to do a real brief Reader's Digest form uh, update if that would be all right. Um, the first page is the original proposal we came to you in January where we had requested the $2.6 million and, uh, you know, that was when we were all beginning the whole process. And then in March, we had, if you go to the second page, I just wanted you to have the originals to see where we went from to the second one was when the General Assembly came out with their revisions and we were able to drop because of the uh, versions that they gave us, the VRS contributions decreased, and we were able to change the funding needs, and we received uh, more f state aid and a little federal aid, and it dropped the amount to 2.42. Then if you turn to the third page, um, anything in red is what we have to really need to do for next year and for the uh, in order to continue to be able to offer and do what we're doing for the school system. The VRS contribution, as you know, went up um, to 406,333, which is not presently in our budget. And then I went back and revised and re-looked at the salary increases and talked to the board about it instead of, and these are in black because they're just proposed. Um, they're not any anything in red is what we're hoping we're going to be covering if we get the additional five hundred thousand, and what we can do with it. Um, the three hundred and six would be the required amount in order to give our teachers a one-step increase. If we did the support staff at five percent, it's two hundred and seventy-three thousand, and if we did administrators, it would be a two percent at ninety thousand, and we took out the supplement line. We still need the the six teachers, um, and if Later, there's a detailed explanation in the three pages that follow, or four pages that follow, explaining what and what we've done, and it even explains end of year monies and how we're using those. Um, we need the one special ed and the uh, one special ed teacher assistant for the autistic class that we'll be offering at the middle school. We need the two elementary teachers because of growth and continued increases in uh, free and reduced lunch. Our class sizes were being required, especially in the K-3 area, to be reduced, and we have larger enrollments projected to come in. And then at the secondary level, those would be at the middle school, the school that we've had the most issues with, you know, keeping accredited and maintaining especially math and science teachers there. Um, we need two additional teachers because we'll be adding an additional 69 students to that school next year. And so those were needed. The electronic routing position we removed. Um, we'll wait till a further date. The textbook line dropped. Um, we're going to be using some end of the year money for that. Approximately um, $94,578.41 to be exact for uh, textbooks, but we need additional money to cover that. The SOL instructional materials was reduced, um, and we did that, and we needed to add some other things to it, but the SOL instructional materials ended up being uh, end of year money. We're gonna be using 33,500 and still needed an additional 15,000. That's for microscopes and all equipment to prepare our students for taking the SOL test. Um, Instructional supplies and equipment for CTE, um, we can use about 10,000 for um, urgent needs that we're going to be using, and this is beyond Perkins money, 
and uh, we need to use 10,000 of the additional money that you all had proposed to give us. And then we were looking at copying and printing services. Um, we're hoping to bid that down. Um, early look 